problems, as all elder sons do with their fathers, but uh, in order to keep pace with him, I didn't, I wasn't particularly interested in birds, but I became very interested in insects, is what birds eat. So maybe there's a father-son metaphor there somewhere. So when I was very young, I made a huge collection of insects. This collection gradually began to collect more and more and more obscure insects until I began to feel that I was a big game hunter on a small scale, and ethically I had to stop. But I still do have a very large collection of um, insects of the British Isles. So long answer to your short question, if I come down again next time, please, I would like to be a professional natural historian. I tried to find two occurrences, I suppose, which might provide the background for being interested. One, I was the present at the drowning of a close friend. I was aged about 10, which was very traumatic. And when I was about six years old, I was taken to one of these air shows where test pilots try out new aircraft. And there was a tremendous crash, and a lot of people were killed. So at the age of six, I was witness to a terrible air crash. And the age of 10, I had this traumatic event where a close friend of mine died through drowning, and I couldn't do anything to stop it. Sometimes it is very, very obvious and stares you in the face with a, a great deal of uncomfortableness because sometimes autobiography is far too raw and uncomfortable to use for uh, notions of fictional metaphor. <laughs> Sometimes it's much more deeply buried. I made a film called The Belly of an Architect in Rome, and I hadn't realized until probably five or six years after having made it how autobiographical it was. And when I did realize that, it was again a bit of a shock. But I made a film called The Draftsman's Contract, which could very easily be called The Filmmaker's Contract, and indeed The Belly of an Architect could very easily be called The Belly of a Filmmaker. In terms of my career later, I suppose, there were two big artistic events which had a big impression on me felt somehow from the art school training that I had that it was almost um, unwise to be too, should we say, academically intelligent. I was encouraged that the heroes should be people like um, Van Gogh, all spirit and maybe little rationality, whereas intrinsically I had an interest in intellectual pursuits and I think my cinema is extremely rational. So in 1963, I saw an exhibition by this man called R.V. Kitta. It was an absolute eye-opener to me. And I suddenly decided that's the sort of painting I want to do. And I suppose when I was about 17, I saw Igmar Bergman's The Seventh Seal. As an adolescent, I'd spent a lot of time looking at British and American cinema. But this was the first, I suppose, European art movie I'd ever seen. So these were two big catalytic events for me. And I think both of those are responsible, I would imagine, for my interests basically in ideas of the still image and ideals of the moving image. Well, we all have an absolute natural uh, predilection to be able to express ourselves in images. What unfortunately happens is that our educational system is so text-based that um, the business of making sophisticated images tends to disappear, I suppose, when we were in our early teens. But I was encouraged by a number of people who saw that I had a certain sort of talent. And I'm just fascinated in the business of making images. And whether I make those images on paper or on canvas, or whether those images are manufactured for the silver screen or for the TV screen, 
I don't think it particularly matters. So my prime interest is visual language, the excitement of making marks on paper, as Picasso said, making a stain on the wall, just the sheer excitement of that, whatever the content, which of course does create, I suppose, another criticism that I'm far more interested perhaps in form and structure than I am in content. But McLuhan always said the medium is the message, and I would fully suggest that notions of structure and form are themselves content. Perspective. To demonstrate the science of drawing, a cheat of the eye systematized, the metaphorical excitements of considering the vanishing point. classifying things. I mean, that's almost the definition of civilization anyway. Our desperate attempts to try and understand the chaos around us all the time by finding systems of classification. Whether that's some grand theory of relativity or whether it's simply the telephone book. I made a film called H's for House, which just simply put together all the concepts and all the ideas, which were all very disparate, which were simply linked by the initial letter. So you get ideas of um, H's for happiness, health. H's for hemophilia, emirate, hemisphere, habilitate. H's for habits. His holiness, heaven, hell, hysterectomy, hamster. H's for... The only reason these things are put together is for the stupidity of a system. And if you look at all our systems and devices, all these desperate systems we use to classify our universe, a lot of them are extremely absurd. C is for cleanliness. But they're necessary. They're necessary in order to tabulate, to give our sense of history a method to give our memory something to hang on to. So I think my raw material really is the whole basis of what stood by the idea in its widest possible sense, the notion of classification.